All right guys, so what if I told you that the largest digital camera ever built is now pointing at the entire southern sky, literally trying to record the universe like a cosmic time lapse? Well, that's what the Vera C. Rubin Observatory is trying to do with LSST, which stands for the Legacy Survey of Space and Time. It just took its first images a couple days ago, and trust me, this is the start of a new chapter in astronomy. And if you're thinking, okay, another telescope, cool, what's the big deal? Nah, nope. this one's different, and here's why. The Legacy Survey of Space and Time is a massive 10-year sky survey using an 8.4 meter telescope in Chile. Its job is to scan the entire visible sky every few nights. And the result? We get a motion picture of the cosmos over time. But here's the kicker. It uses the largest digital camera to ever be put on a telescope, over 3 billion pixels. The Rubin Observatory is going to collect about 20 terabytes of data per night. That's the scale we're talking about here. Huge. And all of this just began, as we can see in the very first test images that I will be showing you later in this video. All right, real quick, Rubin isn't just a telescope. She was obviously a person. The telescope is named after Vera C. Rubin, who was an astrophysicist who basically proved dark matter is real. How? She looked at how galaxies spin and realized that the stars were moving way too fast to be held together by just the gravity that arises from just visible matter. Something unseen that we later called dark matter had to be there, and the Rubin Observatory is now named in her honor. This telescope is about to revolutionize space science, trying to map the whole sky every few nights. So yeah, Vera C. Rubin changed the game once, and now her name is about to do it again. So, what did it see? One of the cooler things that LSST does is take raw, wide-angle images. The camera doesn't just take pretty pictures of very specific object like Hubble did. It takes giant slices of the sky in unprecedented resolution. You'll be able to watch how galaxies spin, how stars flicker, and how mysterious objects just appear out of nowhere. Things like supernovae, rogue asteroids, rogue planets, and maybe even something we've never seen before. You can see those now. And that's what LSST is built to catch. The survey is more than just photos, though. It's data for cosmology. The LSST will help refine our estimates of the total matter energy content of the universe using models like the Lambda CDM model. In our cosmological models, we have omega terms. Omega total is made up of omega m, omega lambda, and omega k. That's defined as the matter density, dark energy density, and curvature. By mapping how distant light from distant galaxies is bent and redshifted, the LSST helps test our cosmological model, Lambda CDM, in ways we've never been able to before. If anything in this balance is off, LSST could reveal it. And that's why it matters, because this isn't just about beautiful images. The LSST could detect potentially hazardous asteroids, it could find faint galaxies we've never seen, or reveal patterns in dark matter distribution. This is not just our way of looking at the universe, but tracking it as it changes. It's like building a security camera for the cosmos. And the best part? The data won't be locked away. The images and databases are going to be publicly available so scientists, students, and even some curious internet people like you can explore the universe yourself. You want to find an exoplanet candidate? Go for it. Want to analyze light curves for variable stars? Yep, you can do that. The data is going to be there. The Rubin Observatory is going to democratize discovery. <laughs> So what other images does it take? Let's look at a couple of sneak peeks from the LSST, images that it's taken pretty recently. This right here is made from over 1,100 images captured by the Vera C. Rubin Observatory. The video begins with a close-up of two galaxies, and then it zooms out to reveal about 10 million galaxies. You think that's a lot, but that's actually just roughly 0.05% of the 20 billion galaxies that it's going to eventually take over its 10-year period. This video over here shows over 2,000 asteroids that we haven't seen before in our solar system, including seven asteroids that are close to the Earth. But, of course, they don't pose any danger. We probably would have heard about it. Or maybe we wouldn't have. I don't know. But regardless, about 20,000 asteroids are discovered in total by all other ground and space-based observatories every year. But in about 10 hours, the Rubin Observatory was about to find 2,100. That's insane. 
Rubin will definitely be the most effective observatory at spotting these sorts of objects in space that are passing through the solar system. This image here takes over 600 images that are taken by the Rubin Observatory and puts them together to reveal this absolutely gorgeous, colorful image. We can see by doing so many, many different types of objects and gives us a lot more detail than we would have seen in a single image. Combining 678 images, we can see clouds of gas and dust that compromise the Trifid Nebula and the Lagoon Nebula, which are thousands of light years away. Lastly, like I said, a lot of the data will be public, so you yourself right now can go to this website that I'll link in the description below and go look at some of these beautiful images that they've taken. For example, here is a little interactive map of various objects that Ruben has taken images of, lots of them obviously galaxies. But you can zoom in, zoom out, and you get still a lot of resolution. And you can see a massive amount of galaxies here. You're looking at about, apparently, in this frame right here, about 1 20th of Ruben's field of view. And zooming out, you get to about two times Ruben's field of view. This is like switching from a flip phone camera to a 4K camera overnight. You're seeing fine structure here, embedded stars, dynamic range, and all in a single snapshot. Imagine what 10 years of this will look like. And yes, you heard me right. The Legacy Server of Space and Time will do its images over a 10 year period, taking pictures every 20 seconds. We're gonna have a very, very comprehensive image of the cosmos. And we're gonna have it at every 20 seconds, which is a big deal. You get to see differences that you weren't able to see before, especially with the fine structure and the detail that we can see with the LSST. To wrap it up, the LSST and the Rubin Observatory are about more than what's out there. They're actually about how what's out there changes, how the universe breathes, shifts, surprises. This is a telescope for time, and time, as we know, always has stories to tell. So, what kinds of things do you hope that the LSST will capture? Maybe an asteroid that's coming towards Earth, of course? Or do you think maybe some UFOs that it wasn't able to see before? Leave a comment below about what kinds of things you think LSST should capture and what you hope to see. If you enjoyed this video format, be sure to leave a like below and subscribe to my channel. It'll really help me a lot. Thank you so much for watching the video and keep expanding your universe, guys. See you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It's free and you can change your mind at any point in time. And it really helps me how as well.